Hello, my name is Jason Cho, and this is my video for Project 1 at Arch 55 at Texas Unit, Texas A&M University. So, the project I decided to choose for this exercise is John Novell's proposal for the Louvre at Abu Dhabi. It's under construction right now. So it has this gigantic dome through which it has perforations to let diffuse light into the building. The dome is constructed first from a simple geometry, which is then repeated in different size, in different uh, directions, to create this intricate fractal pattern for the dome. And it's supported by this gigantic truss system. So the dome is basically made out of three major components. The first, the outer dome. The second, the truss system. And third, the interior dome. For the purpose of this exercise, I will recreate the outer dome and the truss, and not necessarily the interior dome. So the first challenge was creating a dome with square faces that I can attach the geometry onto. And as you might know, if you create a dome with a regular uh, sphere with a regular primitive, you get these radial, radial fa faces onto it. So I can't really attach my geometry onto wedge shapes. So I decided not to go with that. Instead, I can make something from this primitive, which is mesh sphere X. So from this I can explode and get the shapes I want. But at the end, I decided to abandon this, even though it has the square faces that we can attach the geometry onto. Because I can't really control the steepness of the curve of the dome, and I can't really change the density after I attach the geometry onto it. So instead, I decided to go with the most simplest line. And this line has some urinary force applied to it and realized through the kangaroo physics engine. So I can, through this I can control the smoothness and the steepness of the dome, which I liked. So after I baked this, I simply lofted it to create a smooth dome. So this doesn't have any divisions on it yet. Just simple, smooth dome. And so what I like about this method compared to the starting off with the sphere is that I can control the number of divisions on the dome. So right now here has five by five, so twenty-five squares in total, to which I can apply the geometry onto. So the geometry I made previously in AutoCAD and Rhino has the boundary box applied to it. So each of these corners would be morphed onto each of these corners. Pretty simple. So So once I morph them on there, I get a shape that looks like this. So this is kind of what we need. And so from this geometry, I can subtract, since we need a circular dome, I can subtract a simple cylinder to create the final shape. Uh -huh. we need. So using this method I can control the density of the dome. So once I attach this again I wait for it to 
stop thinking. Oh, there we go. So this time it has a 10 by 10 grid, so 100 geometries attached onto it. So using this method, I can create geometries, domes of different densities. So the first dome has 10 by 10 grid onto it, so 100 geometries in total, then trimmed. Second has 15 by 15, and third 20 by 20. Quite dense. So the second part is to create the truss system that will support the dome. There are several ways of doing this, and I decided to go with the radial grid method. So this lets me overlay a simple curve on top of each other and on a radial grid pattern, kind of like the polar uh, array command in AutoCAD. So this lets me control the distance between each geometry and this lets me control how many and this control how, how many axes. So more of these, the more complex. And I simply extruded them, which gives me the shape of the truss, and from which I subtracted two geometries. First the dome, which will be the top, and second the bottom part, because it was too long. So two different methods. So this is the final shape I get, nice and smooth. And then once I bake it, it looks something like this. And by overlaying all of these geometries, I told it not to auto save. And get something like this. Let me just show you the final renderings. So this is what it looks like when they're all overlaid in a shaded pattern. This shows some of the cutaway to reveal the different layers onto them. And here are some renderings. This is the ambient occlusion view. And this is the interior view showing the shot the light coming into it and the shadows. Which kind of looks like the image John Novelli used for his proposal. And I guess the last step that I don't have on here is find out in a parametric way to create these holes onto the truss because I don't really have them on here. This is such a solid truss. And here are the curvature analysis. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching.